I'm gonna show you how to go from this echo, 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 echo. to this echo. We'll also go over the difference between echo and reverb, their causes, popular myths surrounding them, and the steps to take to actually treat both of them. So without further ado, let's go. To understand echo and reverb, first you must understand sound. Sound is basically energy that travels in all directions from one source. In an open space, the sound gets quieter or it decays as it travels away from the source. In a room, that sound bounces off the surfaces in a room and creates echo and or reverb. Echo is the distinct repetitions of a sound that you would hear in a space. If you've ever been in a cave, that's also an example of echo. Cool. Reverb is continuous sound within a space without distinct repetitions, making that sound harder to understand. So imagine being in a classroom or auditorium and it's harder to make out what exactly the speaker is saying because of the bad acoustics in the space. So that's an example of reverb causing issues in a space. Now, let's talk about some common causes of echo and reverb in a space. The first cause is having extremely large rooms. When you have a large room, sound has more time to travel throughout that space and bounce off hard surfaces. And that brings us to our next cause of echo and reverb, which is hard surfaces. When sound bounces off those hard surfaces where you have a metal space, even if it's just drywall, or if you're in a cave, for example, that sound bounces back and that's what you hear as echo or reverb. Similarly, if you have tall ceilings, that also can be an issue because that allows more space for sound to travel uninterrupted, creating more echo and reverb in the space. Now let's get into the myths surrounding echo and reverb and improving the acoustics in your space. First of all, you definitely don't wanna just hang curtains or blankets, or even put egg cartons on your walls, thinking that will reduce the reverb and echo in your space. These things aren't thick enough to actually absorb the sound that is present in your space, especially when you're in a big space. Now, admittedly, if you're in a smaller space, adding anything soft in that space will help reduce the echo and reverb that is in that space. That is why when you're in a closet, for example, it sounds a lot better than when you're in your open hallway, because that closet is full with clothes, and other materials that is absorbing the sound in that space. The next myth is putting bookshelves in your space. Some people think that adding bookshelves in your space will help absorb sound somehow, but this just isn't gonna work. Bookshelves are hard wood surfaces that reflect the sound and make the echo and reverb problem in your space much worse. The next myth when it comes to improving echo and reverb in a space is plants. Some people think that adding a whole bunch of plants in your space is gonna improve the echo and reverb, but this just isn't true. There are no plants out there that will absorb sound within a space. Now, let's move on to how to actually reduce the echo and reverb in your space. This can be done in two ways. The first way is through diffusion. Diffusion is basically scattering the sound waves from the source, breaking them up, and making those sound waves a lot weaker, reducing the echo and reverb that you hear within that space. Now, bookshelves and plants can be great for diffusion. If you have a smaller space, Adding just about anything to it can be great for sound diffusion. It can help scatter those sound waves, reducing the overall echo and reverb in that space. There are also sound diffusion panels that have protrusions on the face of the panel to further help break up that sound energy and scatter it throughout the space, reducing the overall echo and reverb in this space. The second way would be to use materials that absorb the sound within your space. Now, as I mentioned before, if you're in a medium to large space, you can't just throw any old materials in your space and expect you to get good results. So you're probably wondering, what things should I look for when choosing the right materials? There are three key factors to consider when choosing the right sound absorption material for your space. First is material quality. Understand that some materials are more absorptive than others. The second thing you should consider is the thickness of the materials that you're choosing. Thicker materials will absorb more sound, especially at lower frequencies. And then the third thing you should consider is of course the aesthetics, how it looks in your space. We have acoustic panel options that will fit any budget, aesthetic, and acoustical needs. Now at this point you're probably wondering, how much material do I need in my space? Great question. Depending on the dimensions of your space, what your walls, floors, and ceiling are made of, and also what the room will be used for. That will determine how much material you need in order to get the desired reverb time that you need for your space. We also have a tool on each of our acoustical panel product pages that will tell you how many panels you'll need for the total square footage you enter. 
and we also have a tool that tells you the amount of absorption you need to add to get the desired reverb time that is ideal for your space. Definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us for an acoustical analysis. We'll tell you the exact amount of absorption to add in order to get the desired reverb time that will fit the needs of your space. Mm -hmm.